Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to present the best budget zoo deck that you can play in Rastakan's Rumble post nerfs meta game. In fact, if I was starting to play Hearthstone right now, this would be the first deck that I would build. It's dirt cheap, it's only 1200 dust, it consists of 20 commons, a bunch of basic cards and only 4 rare cards. So this deck really doesn't make you waste anything. Most of the cards are very usable, stuff like Darwolf Alpha, Star Creepers, Fungal Mancers can be used in a wide variety of decks. The only rare cards, well Serenite Chain Gang is going to rotate out of standard format in April, but that 200 dust on 2 copies of Serenite Chain Gang right now is definitely worth it. It can be used in many decks right now. And then there's a pair of Doom Guards, which is a Warlock class card. But if you choose to go for something like Q-Block later on, then it's still usable in there. And it's also part of most of the full cost 2 builds as well. There are a few ways to build a 2 deck right now. The most common full cost 2 deck is based around abusing healing synergies and Prince Kelaset, which obviously is a legendary card. So if you have Prince Kelaset and you put in some Light Wardens and you put in some Happy Ghouls and stuff, then you can build a very explosive 2 list. And that Zulist synergizes extremely well with Prince Kelaset because none of the heal package cards are 2 mana cards. But without Prince Kelaset, that package just is a little bit lackluster and it also forces you to craft a number of rares that have no real use anywhere else. Another option, one that I see many budget lists using right now, is to use Grim Rally. And Grim Rally is here. Grim Rally. Destroy a friendly minion, give your minions plus one plus one. However, Grim Rally just isn't very good. There is no real token generation for Zoo to the extent that Grim Rally would actually be a good card. And if you look at statistics of Grim Rally decks, then Grim Rally simply is not a card that you want to be using. It is not performing well enough. So why many people want to build budget lists around that one, it's also a rare card, so you have to spend a little bit to craft it, is way beyond me. When Rastakan's Rumble was released, I obviously experimented with Grim Rally, it's a new card from Rastakan's Rumble, in a full cost deck. And it didn't even work there. So there's absolutely no reason to build a Grim Rally 2, especially when you're on a budget. When you're on a budget, you want to stick to the basics. This build. It has double silence, it has double weapon removal. Very powerful tech cards that are useful in a multitude of matchups. And it makes use of very powerful old classic cards. Direwolf Alphas, give your other minions more power. Dark Iron Dwarves, 4 mana 4-4 four, four, with an immediate effect. Just using very powerful, very solid cards with a good mana curve that allows you to curve out, play stuff all the time, use your hero power to get more cards to your hand, make smart trades, but be fairly aggressive because you don't have a lot of longevity with this kind of a deck. And you can win a bunch of games. I played this deck on the first day of January season. I went 8 and 3 with my initial test run with this one. And that was against other people who were in Legend earlier or were trying to race to Legend with the best possible decks. So this deck is more than capable of taking you all the way to Legend if you have the patience for that. When you mulligan with this deck, you're really looking for a curve. You want to play 1-drop into 2-drop into 3-drop, or some combination. If you're in the coin, you sometimes want to get 2 1-drops on 1 followed by a 2-drop. There are lots of alternatives, but the main thing that you want to do when you mulligan, you try to look for a curve. It starts from a 1-drop, and Flame Imp is the best 1-drop you have, so always try to find Flame Imp if at all possible. Generally, the best 2-drop you have is the Vulgar Homunculus, Although, if you have a bunch of 1-drops available, then Direwolf Alpha can also be useful, because then you can go wide, and Direwolf Alpha can give more attack to all of your minions. There are some tech cards for specific matchups. If you're facing a weapon class, you're facing like Hunter, Paladin, Warrior, even under Warlock, because they could be Q blocks, then Acidic Swamp is really good, and Silence can come in handy against Death Rattle Hunters, or against Paladins with Spike with Steeds. And if you already have good cards to play very early on, it's also possible to keep Fungal Mancer in slower matchups, because if you already have stuff that you know you get to play on the board, and then Fungal Mancer will come down on 5 to give you a bit more additional power. It's really all about finding that curve. 
that's what you're looking for. There isn't that much of an individual card that you have to keep when you play this. It's more about looking at the whole. It is a very board-centric deck, so you have to maintain control of the board in order to win the game. Typically you do that by taking smart trades, trying to buff up meaningless minions that can then actually kill some meaningful minions from your opponent, and still maintain board control for yourself. But you also need to recognize that at some point usually in a game, there's a moment where you have to switch gears and start hitting face instead, and rely that you can race from there to the finish line. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, I have a lot of gameplay material against the very best decks in the game to show you exactly how this deck is capable of beating them. Let's go take a look at that. I think I can try with this hand, and then I just need to try to hit face very quickly. That's just about the plan. So if I go in with like double one drops. I might go with just one one drop. Let's try just one one drop, just in case there is something like an explosive explosive drop coming. If it's wandering most, this one most likely is going to be able to kill it. So we're trying to attack. Freezing trap. Oh, that's interesting. So no explosives then. Alright, I think we go with the librarian. And they void walker in that case. Get this taunt minion out here to protect my librarian a little bit. Have the ability to get Dival Falf out there next turn. Looking for these sorts of opportunities here. Okay. No more secrets yet. That's good. He can of course have a flanking strike coming. So do I want to commit my Dival Falfa? I push a little bit to face, he plays flanking strike. He gets a tree, tree, and my die wolf dies. Or I can just play like Homunculus Librarian, push just a tree to the face, taking an awful lot of damage myself, but holding on the die wolf for now. I think I do want to hold on the die wolf for now. Start with this one and play the homunculus as well who's just three to the face obviously I've taken a ton of damage to my own face from the homunculus and the librarians and the flame imp but definitely spell hunter or secret hunter or something like that and I didn't want to give him a good target for oh he has explosive runes uh, yeah that's rough well, there's not much I can do because I don't have... Next turn he's going to play the Spellstone, right? Because he kept the card. So if I sacrifice my entire board, then I can't deal with the Spellstone. Oh, that's inconvenient. I think I need to do some tapping here. That might help me out in the future. I'll probably play this double Alpha here. But I'm not going to attack, because that is very likely going to be an explosive trap. This will entice him to use some kind of a spell, instead of playing the spellstone maybe. Even though that would be wrong, but it might still entice him to do such a thing. And I'm going to, <coughs> then I'm going to give this a try. Okay, it's probably going to be explosive trap. Then I can play the fungal measure that I just got. And then I can hit him in the face. Probably going to be explosive, which I'm almost certain of that. But with this line, I have some power that it's actually going to face here. And I can also go into Firefly. It's fine. So I can actually de start dealing a little bit of damage. Okay, dealt with one explosive trap. Of course, if he has like double explosive trap, then that would be. That would be something. But I have like Dark Iron Dwarf and Dark uh, Wolf Alpha available. Maybe he doesn't have a spell stone. Top deck Rex around 6, that's so good. That is so good. But what can you do? Not yet the time to go in with the Doom God. 
I think it's Direwolf Alpha here. And the Dark Iron Dwarf. And we push 6 to face. Okay. Push 6 to face. Try to be aggressive. Really, really working on it. What can he have next? To my side. Just one huffer though. So I have 7, puts him down to 12. Fungalmancer is pretty sweet. I'm just Fungalmancer to get a trade on the Leok. I think that's appropriate here. He, he doesn't have a lot of cards in hand right now. So I'll try this line. I'll push 5 with this one. I'll play the Flame Elemental and the Fungalmancer. And I will trade away the Leok. Puts him down to 14. Rexa has been spent. Explosive Trap has been spent. The best chance I have to keep pushing and potentially win this. Poisonous Taunt. That's nowhere near enough. I can just silence that and we actually win. But I guess I could give it a try. So I might find something to buff it with. And it kind of kind of protects the rest of the board against stuff like candle shot. But we'll see. Let's try. Hunt the cap three cards. Tracking might imply well it can still be spell hunter, but it can also be it can also be like Tetrattle Hunter. My hand was really bad though. I managed to draw a ton of four drops. His hand seems to be bad too. That's some consolation. So I can do either doubling imp. What if he has an explosive trap? Well, if he has an explosive trap, he has an explosive trap. I think it's doubling imp here. I just want to get stuff on the board. The alternative was flame imp and tap, but I thought that was too low tempo. Now we get to see maybe if there are secrets. This looks like a death rattle hunter right now. That's interesting. So do I want to trade away the gluttonous ooze? It gets value trades and stuff if I don't. Do I let go of my taunt if I do trade? Yeah, I think that will be fine. I'll trade it with that one and use these to push face. I have a silence for Grizzly. He still has two cards that he kept. What if there's like an... Oh, the spider bomb. Okay. This will be a big deal. Not that great of a spider bomb. So this one probably will have to trade it away anyway. And this is the key minion, so I will play everything else out there first. And trade will come in last. This will go face. And this will trade the spider bomb. And I lose the biggest minion anyway. Play three minions on the board to make it more difficult for him to get spider bomb value. Gets full spider bomb value anyway. Oh! Someone's still playing Mossy Horror. I think that's pretty surprising. Well, there won't be a second Mossy Horror in that deck. At least it's very, very unlikely. So at this point I just put in more stuff on the board. Yeah, just more stuff on the board and hit face. Next turn I have the ability to go Dark and Dwarf, Dark Wolf Alpha type of things. Haven't seen a Stitch Tracker, so there won't be another Mossy Horror. They could be Grizzly, of course. I have a Silence for Grizzly. I can deal with one Grizzly, but then if he has Cube and an Activator... Then I can't deal with that. So that's one way to lose. But first of all, he would have to have the Grizzly. He could also have Rexa. Having Rexa run 6 in every game would be pretty bad. I was one star away from Legend last month. Oh dear, Latvir. He does have Rexa run 6. So two games, two Rexas on 6. Don't worry, Latvir. Legend isn't that important. You will make it. 
you will make it eventually. Alright, well now we get to see the Rexar, which I guess is kind of fine. And just play stuff on the board. And we punch face, because this is a race. I'm trying to race him as best as I can. But man, getting Rexard on six, two games in a row now, kind of feels bad, but positioning is so that even if he kills a taunt minion, there's always a minion next to Dago Falfa, unless he does something more, which he obviously can do. But eight mana is his real power play turn usually, seven isn't. So I still have hopes. What can he do? He has seven mana. Seven mana is a fair amount of mana. If he needs to roll a beast, he only has five mana after that, which suddenly is a little bit less great. But if he has even like a flanking strike, that's good enough. And this one, if he can follow this up with a cube. So I can try to silence that. And then I can push 12 to the face. Then if there is a cube... Then if there is a cube, he wins. But I can't do Doom God first, I don't think. I need to tap here. Okay, this is perfect. This is beautiful. This is a thing of beauty. Boom. Victory against the Detrattle Hunter. Game 3, Hunter 3. Different Hunter. Can I beat this Hunter? I'm going first. I'll start with the Flame Imp. If I can pick up another one drop, I could go Void Walker. <laughs> one drop on T. But let's see. The explosive traps are really, really scary when playing Zoo. Especially without Kelaset. Yeah, they, they just keep being things. That is true. We need an aggressive opener. And I have to hope that there's no explosive trap. He kept two cards. This can usually take out... Oh, it's a mid-range hunter. Okay, 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 okay. In that trading... Oh, there's mid-range hunter we're trading. Alright. There's a little no bad hunt to deck. <laughs> the deck quest. Yeah, hunters are doing pretty well right now. I have to admit. This deck will have Unleash in it. Which is something I'm a little bit concerned about. I believe in trading. I believe in trading against this Hunter archetype, but let's see. Three Hunters, all of them playing different archetypes. Right now I'm not doing too bad against... Unleash. But I also have a nice answer to this one. That was always possible, but... This is the line. Taking the, taking the trade there. Alright, and we keep pushing. Is there a deck that counters all of them? Yeah, Priest. Priest counters all of them. Oh, spending a kill command there. That's gonna hurt. And I found an ooze. But I can't play an ooze out there yet, but I can definitely play a direwolf alpha. And I can keep pushing. We keep pushing. He might have an unleash here. But unless that unleash comes with a Timberwolf, I'm not scared. Unleash and Timberwolf would be awesome though. That one is not too scary, right? 15, 6, 7... 50-50 if I play Soul Fire to have lethal. I could also try to tap and then Soul Fire the Thunderer I know. Then I can still push 7. 
I push 7, he goes down to 8. Or I could Doom Guard down the Thunderer, I know, but. Does he have a comeback if I Doom Guard the Thunderer, I know? For 6 mana. I don't think he does. I think I'll just Doom Guard here. I think I'll just Doom Guard down the Thunderer, I know. I don't think he has a comeback from this. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's stuck a Rex around 6. Everyone has that stuck a Rex around 6. Is it a comeback? Well, it's close to one anyway. Do I need to play the Doom God? No, I can play the doubling game. It's fine. I'll try with this one. 7 mana. What can he get from the Dead Stalker? Or does he have something outside of the Dead Stalker? Unleash could do something. Oh, this is Virus hybrid. Hybrid deck. But now he would kind of need something like a explosive trap to not be immediately dead. And even if there's an explosive trap, then the second Doom Guard is still lethal. There. So it wasn't actually mid range, it was it was Wyvers hybrid. Don't know how to how to process this. This is not a hunter. Oh, this is a terrible draw. You never want this double spell breakers against the priest. I needed one and two drops, and there are plenty in the deck. But I couldn't get those. Probably. But we'll see how it goes. Let's see what happens. Now he doesn't have a clean kill on the Void Walker, but obviously he has cheap spells. He wants to make this Radiant Elemental big. Well, maybe those double spellbreakers will actually come in handy. Who knows? I certainly don't know yet. Everything is going face here. Let's see what happens next. This could be the OTK Priest. Okay, it's OTK. Alright, alright. So now I know what I'm up against. So it's not a combo priest, there's no inner fire. They can still be mass hysteria. But he also has the ability to get a coin from the gargoyle. I can only deny coin from the gargoyle, or I can deny the discount effect from the radiant. Can't deny both. I think I need to try to deny the discount effect from the radiant and push face. He gets the kill on the homunculus and he gets a coin. He might even attack just that one in and then mass hysteria if he's scared, but I don't think he has a reason to be scared. There's always the coin. Oh, that was a great pickup from the coin. I'll use this one. I think I'll kill them both now. That will protect this one for the time being, unless he has happens to have the unless he happens to have the resurrect spell immediately. He has the resurrect spell immediately. <laughs> well, this is what sometimes happens. Again, you could need to do it like this so that I get to push five to face. But yeah, this matchup, this matchup is probably not winnable with a budget version of two. damage. He can Psychic Scream next turn. If I kill this villain, how much is it going to help? I think I need to do it like this. Just silence that villain, deny the effect, 
He cannot kill off this felon, so he cannot scream this board. Well, I guess he can still scream this board if he really likes to. Okay, Lyra power. How much more? Oh, that's a good card from Lyra. Okay. Six, seven, eight. I'm one off because he got topsy turvy from Lyra. Next turn he can kill off his Velen too. And next turn he can play stuff he could play stuff like Lich King. He kills off the Velen, he resurrects the Velen. He plays like Spirit Lash. So if I can tap into Soulfire I win. Right here, right now. Then I can't play a Creeper. Couldn't tap into Soul Fire. So we push. Let's see. Put him down to four. Let's see if he can fight a Spirit Lash. Or some way with Mind Blasts or something. He has used one Holy Smite already, so... And he doesn't have that many cards. I didn't want to play more minions because I didn't want to give him better... Better stuff with... I didn't want to give him better stuff with the Spirit Lash. I'm one off again. I'm one off again. I'm still a little bit off. Dark Iron Dwarf doesn't help. One off twice. <sighs> one off again. Man. him down to four. That's not going to do it. He can probably resurrect stuff. That's the problem. It's almost certain that he can resurrect things. It's almost certain that he can resurrect things. And then I will be off again. If he screams, then I have another chance to draw and try to find a soul fire. Or die wolf alpha. Double Valve actually would have been lethal a couple of times here as well, so I have had plenty of outs. He has a Lich King card, he has a Lyra card. He has two Lyra cards actually. But let's see. Mm. That healing. Ten healing from the death call from Lich King. 8, 10, 15. I'm one off. No, I'm not. I'm not one off, right? I was a little bit scared over there, but actually we did get this. We did. We did get this in the end. Yes, we got it. We got it. Oh, rogue. Tryharding is my middle name. Tryharding with bad decks. That's like the... Oh. That's an interesting... That's an interesting choice. I don't think I'm even killing it. I think I'm pushing through to the face. Because, you see, there's now this Void Walker out here. So if you just dagger up, then you would still have to sacrifice both. Of course, he has the coin. He has options. He could do like coin SI to kill one flame imp here. Coin Tar Creeper is not bad at all, by the way. I don't have anything good here. I really don't. The best I can do... 
is to put that Ta Creeper down to one health, right? I have the option to hit this one in and then trade there, so that he doesn't have a board. If I don't, he could do trade, trade, dagger, hit. He could do something with cold blood. I think this is fine. We'll try this. Because he no longer has the coin. And putting that one down to one help means that even if there is something, then... It will still die if it hits into anything. Using the gold blood, using the dagger. Okay. He still has one card that he kept. But I can deny a talk turn still with the ooze. Well, ooze is also my only available play, so... It looks like ooze it is. I mean, he gets just three dagger though, which is bad for me. Oh no, he has SI7 agent. This was even worse. This was really terrible. Now if he has Fungal Mancer, that's probably going to be game. So I could do Tar Creeper tap. I could do Chain Gang no tap. If he has Fungal Mancer, he wins no matter what. Ouch. He had just a little bit too good stuff here. Just a little bit. And I drew all the five drops. That was that was terrible, of course. Drawing three five drops by turn five. I need a little bit more early game. Like the turn where I need to play ooze and tap. That was probably a game losing turn. If I had if I was able to play a couple of minions on that turn, I would have likely be still been fine. But he might not have a fungal mancer. But now he can also do just dagger into tug, and then he can trade away the SI7. And then he will still have a 1-1 one, one at a tug. Oh, he has the fungal mess. He has everything. Ouch. Well, that was rough. So that's probably game, right? Probably. That's probably game. At least I can't see... I can't see any outs from this position. Dark Reaper has made its way back into a rogue. At one point it wasn't needed, but like in this game that was that was one of the key, absolute key cards. But it wasn't the only one. I'm surprised that he sacrifices the big one. Although I guess it doesn't really matter. Because that's already 6 damage right there. Even with the Doom God killing his 6 2, he only needs 3 from hand. Well, he has spent both gold plus Ender deck, and so he needs Fungal Mancer or Leroy. Mm, yeah, he had the nuts. OTK or even? I bet OTK, and I think I might need a Spellbreaker. But I kind of also need a one drop. So that was a difficult mulligan. I was tempted to keep the Spellbreaker, on the other hand it's a 4-drop that I was tempted to mulligan away and then just rely on being able to draw it. And it's actually even, and I didn't get a 1-drop. Punished. I was punished for keeping the 4-drop. I mean, there were 8 1-drops in the deck, so... I was still quite likely to find 1 when I mulligan 3 cards, but you don't always get 1. I might not have gotten one even if I mulliganed the spell break, but it would have improved the odds a little bit. He thinks I am Q block now, but I don't have any way to utilize that misconception to my advantage. Oh boy. This hand was a disaster. The options were to tap. I mean, if I tap, I keep him with the perception that I'm Q-block. But I still didn't have a way to utilize that misconception to my advantage, so... That still would not have helped. Now that could be like a noble sacrifice. I'm still a bit surprised that he used the coin. Or it can be auto defense matrix. I think I want to find out now. Noble sack. 
alright. Okay, now at 3 mana. Because he used the coin last turn just to get that noble sacrifice out there, that just made him much, much weaker. So I was really surprised about that. He could, of course, still have a consecration for next turn, which would be bad for me. Do I play around consecration? You would never keep consecration in your hand. I think I'll take these trades. Make consecration a little bit less useful at least. Still have the potential to get a fungal man support for next turn. Consecration can still deal with this if I fungal mancer now. But what are my real options? Like soul fire. I think I'll just do the fungal mancer. And now if he has the consecration he can just use it next turn. But with this hand I didn't see a better line. We get to see the consecration if he has consecration here. This is simply too tempting not to use it. I think this might be okay. He might want to go for a steed next turn, but I have a silence for the steed, so... I'm not that scared of a steed. I'll go with the chain gang. Steeded, steeded recruit kills the chain gang, steeded recruit kills the void walker. He's very likely to play steed here. I would always lose a minion to that. I think this is okay. Prevent more buffs on that one for now. I think I want to tap here. I don't go quite as wide, which will make Diwolf Alpha less useful, but we'll see. He still has equalities and pyromancers and stuff like that available. Maybe I should have went wider. I do want to kill the Kang more. So spending 4 mana, 6 mana. How much more can I tap because he has stuff like Avenging Rats and stuff like that. I might still be able to tap one, one more time. I'll buff up this fellow to kill that. But I do want to kill that Kang more because as long as the Kang more is there then I just don't have anything that I can use to attack. I'll play a couple of minions on the board, but I still haven't seen any equality. And the equality clears are scary. And stuff like equality avenging rat is really scary. But this now implies no equality. So that's a good start. No equality is a good start. Do I want to spend a lot of resources on killing the Glass Knight? Not yet, I think. Not yet. What if he still has the equality then he's just not doesn't want to spend it yet? Equality Avenging Rat is so so scary. But I'm pushing so little damage if I kill the Glass Knight. I do want to take away the true silver champion. I know that that much. I think I'll try it like this. Let's try this approach. But I'm very weak to equality clears here. I'm basically just trusting that there is no equality. There was no equality. It's down to 16. 7, 8, 9, 10. I need another 6. Can I find another 6, please? I need a Doom God. Or I need another Soul Fire. 7, 8, 9, 10. Need another 6. That is not it. And that is not it. 
Oh man. Then I'm afraid I will have to trade. I'm afraid I will have to trade. And he has some lethal outs here. But I didn't want to trade everything into killing that last night too. I just felt that would be too weak. I felt like if I do that, I just hand him the win. Because I still have a silence. I trust that I still have a silence. And silence can still do things. We got it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.